Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unusar Education. Um, I would like to continue uh, talking about uh, Bernoulli distribution, Bernoulli statistics, uh, as part of this advanced uh, course of mathematics for high school students. Um, I do suggest you to watch this lecture from unizor.com um, because it contains uh, notes and uh, problems and solutions, etc., etc., and exams for registered students. So it's like a whole course for either self-study or just as a auxiliary material for the regular school. All right, so um, we were talking about the problem and its solution and right now I would like to basically exemplify um, whatever I was talking before about Bernoulli statistics with three problems which is actually a one problem turned three different ways. Um, there are three very important characteristics when you are talking about uh, statistics. The volume of samples which you have, the like, number of experiments, um, the margin of error you would like to have or you already have based on whatever you have, um, and um, the level of certainty, the probability that your evaluation is correct, basically that's what it is. Um, so these three um, parameters, statistical parameters, are very much related to each other and um, these three problems which I'm going to present today are exactly how to evaluate one parameter based on two others. Okay, so let's consider situation when you have some kind of manufacturing facilities and uh, they manufacture parts for, I don't know, car parts, whatever, and um, there is a quality control so the quality control takes a sample of, let's say, 10,000 parts which were manufactured in this facility during a certain amount of time. And they found that 300 of them are defective. They don't pass the QA control. Something is wrong. So, now, why it happens is a different story. I mean, it depends on what kind of problems they have identified with these 300. Now, um, as the person who is probably more interested in financial um, situation with this particular manufacturing facility, I might be interested just to know how probable the, um, uh, the manufacturing of the defective parts is. Now, obviously, if I have a choice between two different manufacturing facilities, to invest my money, I would like to invest into the manufacturing facility which is um, more reliable, which, which has less number of problems like this, etc. So I would like to evaluate how big this actually is. And uh, I can do exactly the same with another facility, have another number of uh, um, uh, parts taken for quality control and number of results, but how I, I can compare with them. So I have to compare with certain um, mathematical validity. So, my first question is um, I would like to be able to evaluate the probability of manufacturing a defective part with certain level of certainty and my certain level of cer certainty is 0 0.9545. Now, it's not just an arbitrary number I mean, if you remember, the normal distribution has sigma rules. Now, sigma rules for normal distribution is as follows. If you have a um, certain bell curve, and that's the statistical distribution of random variables. Now, this is interval of one sigma around the mean. So it's from minus sigma to plus sigma. Sigma. From the mean value. Mu. Now this is minus two sigma plus two sigma. And this is three sigma. Minus and plus. So the probability uh, of 
random variable with normal distribution to be within one sigma from its mean, which is a relatively narrow um, uh, strip of values. Um, so one sigma would be 0 0.6825. Two sigma rule is so. What's the probability to fall within mu minus two sigma and mu plus two sigma? That's obviously bigger. That's 0 0.9545, and this is exactly the number I have chosen. And the three sigma interval. That's a very, uh, very wide interval around mu. Three sigma would be 0 0.99. I think 73. If I'm not mistaken. So, that's the reason why I have chosen this particular thing. So, with the probability of 0 0.9545, or I would rather say with certainty level of 0 0.9545, I would like to evaluate the probability of manufacturing a defective part. Now, obviously my best um, uh, approach would be just to divide 300 by 10,000. Now, why? Well, let's just go back to the definition of probability. Now, one of the definitions, and probably most natural one, is that the probability is related to frequency. So, if you would like to know what's the probability of certain event, you observe occurring or not occurring of this event during certain number of experiments, and as your number of experiments goes to infinity, then the statistical um, uh, frequency of occurrence of this particular event would tend to some number which is defined as a probability of this event. Now, obviously, open question is whether there is a limit, whether it's a unique limit, etc., etc., um, but that, that's besides the point. Now, the frequency approach to definition of um, probability is kind of natural and everybody understands it. So, if I have 300 out of 10,000 um, defective parts, well, then it actually prompts me to say that most likely um, the real probability of manufacturing should be somewhere around 300 divided by 10,000, which is 0. 03. So, my best estimate for mathematical expectation of the event manufacturing the defective part would be 0 0.03. Now, in the previous lecture when I was talking about solutions, I have suggested that the best way to approach this particular problem mathematically is to um, consider every um, every test which I have made uh, in my quality control and I made 10,000 tests um, consider this to be a Bernoulli random variable which has value 1 or 0 1 means the defective part 0 means it's good part, no defects and we are interested in the real probability p of uh, this is 1 minus p of um, this random variable to take the value of 1. So we have experimented with this random variable and in the series of 10,000 experiments we have um, come up with 300 over 10,000 frequency. Now if somebody else makes another series of 10 experiments, well, he will have different, obviously, number, maybe 310 or 250, who knows. So, um, what I have just did, what, I've, what I have just done, and I have calculated um, basically the frequency, which can be expressed as the following. If the result of the first experiment is x1, and result of the last experiment is xn, where n is equal to 10,000. So these are results of my experiment with xi. I know that 300 times 
I have ones somewhere here and the rest I have zeros so basically if I will summarize them and divide by n that would be my frequency or sample mean as we are saying so again the sum of Bernoulli variables is actually the number of times this event occurs because we have assigned one when it occurs and zero if it's not so their sum divided by n would be my sample frequency in this case is 0 0.03 now if if I make another series of n experiments I would have another number so basically I would like to say is that this is actually a single value of some random variable and random variable is eta which is equal to xc1 plus etc plus xcn divided by n where every xc uh, uh, i's xc1 xc2 etc xcn is exactly the same distributed the same way distributed as xc and they're all independent so they all kind of represent each individual experiment so i have 10,000 experiments so i have 10,000 random variables each one of them is one with a probability p is zero probability one minus p and their sum divided by n is basically a a, a, a probabilistic um, picture of whatever i have done so what i have done i took one particular single value of eta one single series of experiments and i've got this particular number now as you know in bernoulli variables the ma mathematical expectation of xi is it takes value of 1 with probability p and value of 0 with probability 1 minus p so the whole thing is equal to p so mathematical expectation is actually p that's why this which seems to be kind of the same mathematical expectation should be as, as C, right? Mathematical expectation of eta is what? Uh, one ends can be brought out of the expectation and then sum of these, mathematical expectation of sum is sum of expectations and each one is exactly the same um, P as C, so I will have NP divided by N, so it will be exactly the same P. So mathematical, mathematical expectations of these two are exactly the same that's why single value of eta which I have uh, which I have obtained might actually be an approximation of the real uh, P and how good is this well we're talking about this that the good measure is a variance so what's the variance of this and we were discussing it in the previous lecture variance let me wipe out this thing variance of eta is um, variance of c divided by n as we have discussed previously and again it's very easy because uh, variance is a quadratic thing right so n is supposed to be taken out in a square so it will be 1 over n square variance of a sum variance of a sum is sum of the variance so it would be n variances of uh, xc divided by n squared, which is variance of xc divided by n. Now, what is a variance of xc? Well, variance of xc is equal to p times 1 minus p. That's what I have derived in the previous lecture, and we were derived many times before in the Bernoulli variable uh, explanation. All right, so I have the variance and the fact that this denominator contains n is very encouraging it means that as n grows my variance is getting smaller and smaller now variance is a measure of um, deri uh, deviation from from the mean value right so if this is a variation of the mean then the uh, uh, this is a variation of the mean this signifies the deviation from the mean which is smaller and smaller as n grows so that's good thing 
So our uh, distribution becomes uh, more and more concentrated around uh, its mean value. And that's why even a single value of our um, random variable, variable eta might be a good approximation of its mean value. So mean value is, um, is p, so that's what I would like to know, and I don't know it, but single value of eta would be a good approximation um, for the uh, for the mean value because all the values of eta are concentrated around my mean value and how well they concentrate and how close they are that's the measure and the measure is actually getting smaller and smaller which is a good thing now another assumption is that this sum with relatively large n is very much close in its distribution to normal distribution um, we have spent many times actually um, discussing this issue. This is the central limit theorem when the sum of um, uh, random variables under relatively liberal conditions is distributed closely to a normal uh, distribution with the same um, mean and variance as, as the sum. So I'm, I actually can, can say that eta is almost normal uh, random variable with um, mean value p so the mean value is here that's my p and the variance this one which is getting smaller and smaller as n goes to infinity now how can i estimate where is my uh, mean value p if i have only a single value of this ran random variable. Well, I can do it using the sigma rules. I know that my, uh, let's say, two sigma interval around, um, around the mean value um, is the interval where my random variable falls with this probability 0 0.9545. And that's the certainty level which I would like. So basically I can say that with this probability, with this certainty level, this random variable, this random variable eta, would be within two sigma interval from, uh, from the mean. So all I have to say is that my two sigma interval around my unknown probability p is actually the margin of error which I need to uh, establish. So I can say that whatever the value here is, which is zero point, the value of frequency, which is 0 0.03, it's a good estimate of the mean of this particular random variable. And the quality of this estimate is measured as follows. With the probability of 95.45, it's within two sigma interval around, uh, around the mean unknown mean but I don't care actually because I'm talking about this is my estimate and I know that the mean is within two sigma uh, uh, range from it so it's around plus or minus from this from this value now that's great but I don't know my sigma because it depends on variance of xi and xi is again depends on uh, unknown probability p but here is what I have suggested the previous time as far as the solution to this problem. Now, this is not a good solution, let's put it this way, but it's a very uh, practical solution in, in many cases. Now, again, my variance is equal to p1 minus p divided by n, right? Now, what I have suggested in the previous lecture is, yes, I don't know p times 1 minus p. However, this is 0, this is 1, this is function 1 minus x. It's a parabola, right? Uh, 0 and 1 are the points where it intersects the x uh, axis and its maximum is in the between which is one half 
and if it's one half then the maximum is equal to one quarter now we don't care about these because the probability cannot be less than one or, or greater than zero so I can say that my maximum of this is one quarter so I definitely know this right so now this is already something which I do know because I know n it's 10,000 so I can say that my variance is less than um, uh, 1 over 4n which means my um, uh, um, my standard deviation is square root of variance which is which is less than 1 over 2 square root of n so although I don't know my variance exactly of this variable eta I know it's upper bound so if I will use this as my two sigma it will be a wider interval than reality in reality so at least it's some um, measure of evaluation so what is this well n is 10,000 so this is 1 over 200 and now I'm talking about rule of 2 sigma right now 2 sigma is 100 which means that the real probability would be within 0 0.03 minus 100 100 so it's 0 0.02 and 0 0.04 with certainty level 0 0.9545 so this is actually a very simple problem which I have spent lots of time discussing and uh, I just wanted you to understand that you cannot just say that the frequency uh, is 0 0.03 which means probability is somewhere around 0 0.03 if you do not define somewhere around now somewhere around means the following it's better probably than this because we have taken the upper bound but at least I can say that the real probability would be within 0 0.02 and 0 0.04 with this certainty level. It's not 100% certain, by the way. Probability can be significantly greater or significantly smaller than this. But I cannot, <coughs> based on whatever I know right now, I cannot say anything better than this. So that's something which is good. Now, two other problems I would like to go much faster and their purpose is, you see, again, right now we had n and we had the certainty level p. Well, I used lowercase p. This is not uppercase p, which is the probability of c to, 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 to have the value of 1. And what I have derived from this? I have derived the margin of error, which is 2 sigma, which is 0 0.01, 1 hundredths, okay? Now, two other problems, I will just change something, I will define, I will um, uh, be given one particular, two particular parameters and define the third one, different third one, all right? So that's the end of this first problem. We have defined, based on the number of experiments and required level of certainty, 0 0.9545, I have derived the margin of error. So from 10,000, from certainty level 95.45 my uh, margin of error is equal to 100 all right let's go to the next problem and it would be much easier in this case since we basically know what we're dealing with this. by the way I do suggest you after you finish this lecture to go to the website unizor.com and read the comments because they are also like like a textbook basically it's my notes for this lecture which I have written before <coughs> starting it all right now what if under the same circumstances I would like to narrow my 
margin of error from one hundredths to five thousandths. So to basically reduce it by half. What would be the certainty level in this case? Certainty level of uh, my evaluation. So basically what I'm saying is that the probability, this is uppercase, uh, from 0 0.025 to 0 0.035. What would be the probability of this being true? So I reduced by half. <coughs> so going back to whatever I was just saying before, my margin of error was equal to 2 sigma. Now I would like to reduce by half. So my uh, my interval would be half of this one. So it would be sig single sigma rule. Now single sigma rule for normal distribution is this. If we are requiring more narrow interval around my average, my sample average, my sample mean, then obviously I cannot say it with more, I can say it only with less certainty. So I know that within larger interval the certainty is 0 0.9545, but if I would like to say that it's actually much closer, I cannot be as certain. So my certainty level goes to a single sigma. So, what is, uh, in this case, uh, probability of having this thing? Well, obviously this is 0 0.6825. Because every, everything else is exactly the same, so all my calculations, my n is the same, um, my number of uh, defective parts is the same, so my sample average is also the same. and I'm requiring 0 0.005 interval around it. So it's from 0 0.03 minus 0 0.005, which is this, to plus. And since I have already calculated my, my sigma, which was equal to 1 over 200, which is exactly this one. That's why I have chosen this one. That's why I have applied rule of single sigma. So that's my second problem, to, dis to, to establish the level of certainty if my margin of error is given. Now, the first problem was I have uh, established my level of certainty, and then I have found what my margin of error should be. And in that case, when that was 0 0.9545, my margin of error was greater. 0 0.01, one hundredths. But if I would like to actually be satisfied with a smaller certainty level, I can narrow my um, interval in half. And the third problem is, what if I would like to have certain certain cer certainty level, and I would like to have certainty level to sigma. And I would like actually to have a little bit more precise evaluation. So I would like my margin of error to be this small. So I, with my 10,000 experiments um, I, I can achieve this margin of error only with this certainty level. But now I would like to have more certainty and to do this I have to have more experiments. Question is how many? Well let's just think about it. Now, sigma, if you remember, was equal to 2 square root of n, right? Mm. 
And that's why if I would like this to be equal to 0 0.005, Just one second. No, I would like, sorry, I need this certainty level. Uh, I would like to have certainty level zero point ninety eight forty five, but I do not know my n. That's my problem. So, with this certainty level, what interval um, I have to be satisfied with around my mean value? It's 2 sigma, right? This certainty level is associated with the 2 sigma rule. So I know that if I'm on the 2 sigma, minus and plus 2 sigma then I will be within 0 0.9845 so I need 2 sigma to be equal to 0 0.005 because that's the margin of error which I would like to uh, which I would like to have which means that uh, 2 divided by 2 square root of n is equal to five thousands which is one two hundreds so this is square root of n is equal to two hundred n is equal to four zero 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 forty thousand so if I would like to reduce by half my uh, interval relative to my uh, first problem where I was actually requiring this probability but I was satisfied with 0 0.01 uh, margin of error. If I would like to reduce margin of error by half, my number of experiments should go up by 4. That's because the variance is uh, a quadratic function. So, if I would like to have this precision, this precision, so the probability of probability of my p to be within five thousandths of my average value, if average value is 0 0.03. If I would like that <coughs> to be equal to 0 0.9845, so if this level of certainty is the required, then my number of uh, experiments should be 40,000. So this is basically three typical problems which statisticians are solving all the time. The first problem let me just make a quick summary. So the first problem I was given number of experiments and I was given the level of certainty and I have derived my margin of error. Second problem, I also was given this, but I have defined my margin of error to be twice as narrow, narrower. And then I have derived that the probability of my uh, variation, my certainty level, was actually smaller. This was 0 0.9545, this was 90, 0 0.68 something. And the final problem was, the third one, if I have the level of certainty and margin of error, what is my uh, number of experiments which I have to basically get into? Um, I, I, I don't know which which problem is more prevalent. I, I know. It seems to me that sometimes experiments have already been done, then it's either of these guys. But sometimes if you're planning experiment, then you have to really think about what's the certainty level you would like to achieve. 
and what's the margin of error you would be satisfied with and then you will derive the number of experiments you have to we have to do and let me point out another very important um, aspect of this thing now you remember that the real variance of eta eta being uh, C1 plus C2, etc., divided by n is equal to variance of C divided by n, which is equal to P1 minus P divided by n, where P is the probability of C to take the value of 1. Now, what I have done, I have done this. Now, how good is this? Well, obviously, if P is equal to 1 half, that would be exactly. Um, equal. Now, if P is, let me go back to the graph. This is my graph one I, y is equal to x one minus x. All right. This is one zero. This is one. So somewhere in the, in the middle, yes, it's very very close to this maximum value of one quarter. But if you go to the both extremes, so if your event is either very like very unlikely or very likely then this particular variation really not good at all i mean the uh, real variation uh, real variance would be significantly smaller than this one if my p is closer to zero or close to one so sometimes it's a good estimate and whatever we have uh, derived was, was you know, relatively good. But in some other cases it's not. And it's not good whenever my events are rare, too rare or too frequent. Now, speaking about defective parts, is it rare event or is it frequent or is it like one half probability, 50-50, as they say? Well, that's supposed to be a rare event. So the real probability should actually be close to zero. And um, in this particular case, well, let's say if the probability is 0, 0, 0 0.03, which is my evaluation of the probability, then obviously this times 1 minus 0 0.03 would be significantly uh, smaller than 1 half. It would be something like 0, 0.0, like 0.28 approximately, right? it's significantly smaller than 0 0.25, which is one quarter. So our evaluation was really not very good in this particular case. And what we can do is, we can really make this significantly better and smaller, therefore. However, it will not be with 100% certainty. So that's another level of uncertainty which we can introduce to improve this particular um, evaluation of my variance. But again, for the price of losing certain amount of certainty. Now, this will be a subject of the next lecture where I will spend certain time basically to better evaluate this variance not a hundred percent certain but better let's put it this way so then we have to really choose what we prefer to have absolute certainty in this evaluation and then we will have another uncertainty because it's still evaluation of the variance and our variable can go outside of this interval or on the top of that um, uncertainty to add another uncertainty of evaluation of this variance more precisely than this which would narrow our interval but again it will reduce the certainty level so as you see statistics is a really tricky kind of a science but it's a science nevertheless all right thanks very much i do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture on unisor.com thanks very much and good luck